everyone for tuning in today on our um, Instagram live session um, about Bans uh, Nomad Fest that is taking place from 23rd of June till 30th of June, um, showcasing a, a number of amazing expert talks on all different topics, answering your questions, inspiring you, giving you schools, skills. And today I'm very excited to have uh, Uber, uh, <laughs> the amazing Uber. Um, so Uwe has been a um, co-founder of Coworking Bansko. Um, he has uh, he is the co-owner of uh, Bansko Nomad Fest. He is also the founder of uh, My Start Bulgaria, which is a company um, created to give um, services and consulting to all remote workers and companies that want to come to Bansko and. Uh, basically um start a hotel start a company in Bansko. Um Uwe, I'm sure you have a lot of insights because you've been basically you are uh, one of the pioneers in digital nomadism, right? You've been one of the first ones with a vision. Um and you are actually the one guilty to bring me and many other people to Bansko. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank you so much, uh, Masa, for the introduction. Uh, really lovely. I'm, I'm super stoked that we have the chance to talk here and, and share our thoughts and experiences with the people. Um, yeah. so, we have like, a lot to tell us. We have like, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, anybody, if you have questions, please feel free to ask us. I'm sure Uwe knows it all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but uh, let's try. Okay. okay. So let's dive into this, Uwe. Um, we know each other before, you know, like uh, for a few years. I know when you started Bansko, co-working Bansko. So what did you bring you to Bansko? Why Bansko and what? You know, all the why and what questions. Yeah, Bansko was a bit by chance, but I, I bumped into Digital Nomads in 2014, 2015 on a sailing trip. And um, so I, I really fell in love with the idea of remote work and uh, location independence and uh, entrepreneurship and so on and so forth. And I knew I found my tribe and I wanted to be amongst these people. So I started traveling and the usual places, whether it was Chiang Mai or Indonesia or, or, or wherever, I, I just followed uh, the, the, the game and, and tried to be connected. But then soon I found out that this constant traveling is not for me. So I had to fix this problem somehow that I'm amongst uh, this community, uh, but without uh, too much of traveling. I like traveling, don't get me wrong. And, um, but yeah, so then I thought, you know, it would be great to have a place where people come to visit, such like a co-living space or a co-working space. And this gave birth to the idea where Matthias and I then later decided to open a co-working space. However, we initially tried to set it up in Austria, as he was living in Salzburg at that time, and I was in Vorarlberg. And, uh, but it never came, it never fell in place. So somehow a friend of ours, Jürgen, actually, he mentioned, um, yeah, that uh, Bulgaria was such a great place and why we do not consider Bulgaria. And this brought us to Bansko sooner or later, and uh, we found out this is a magical place and uh, it's a great place to be. Although, you know, like in the beginning, um, I mean, everything fell in place once we formed the decision, yes, we want to do it here. But in the beginning, you know, like uh, the people, uh, especially from Sofia, when we visited other co-working spaces, they thought, you know, like uh, these two guys in Bansko, ah, that will never work. And, you know, like there, there was some headwind. But um, yeah, it took us a little bit, but then, you know, like as we were traveling ourselves, we knew what this community needs and, and um, we wanted to create an amazing place where community comes first and where we can, you know, in eyesight, uh, on eyesight, connect with each other. And um, yeah, so it happens. That's the story of Bansko, basically. Amazing, amazing. I'm sure like the life of, uh myself, uh, including myself and many other people really uh, depends on the decision that the two of you uh, took and all the efforts that were behind that. Uh, and I'm sure it wasn't easy at all. So what challenges did you face? What, what were like, you know, let's say the, um, the biggest, most major challenges that you were facing? Uh, when was that? It was 2017 that you... 2017. 
2016, actually it was 2016, we came here in summer because Banskri is a ski area, right? So this is like a typical ski town where in winter it's super busy and in summer it was basically, there was nothing happening here. And so we came in summer just to see how, how is the summer because we thought or we assumed that in winter everything will work anyways as with any other uh, ski, uh, uh, ski town. And um, we were so surprised about the summer because, you know, like, um, B Bulgaria is so further south. We, we are very close. Bansko is very close to the Greek border. And uh, so the weather here was amazing. We were so um, stoked about that. And um, yeah, so in winter, when we opened, so the ski seasons opened around the 15th, 15th of December. It depends from season to season, but something around this. And just one week before opening co-working Bansko, um, we were denied uh, by the landlord um, of this, um, yeah, of the space that we wanted to uh, to make, and uh, they said, you know, like no, uh, we couldn't get the rental contract and so on and so forth. So one week before opening, we had a lot of things to do, and uh, but finally we found the space very very quickly. Every everything happened so fast, and um, yeah, and then you know there was the ribbon cutting. The mayor came for the opening ceremony and so on so it was finally a success but we were not sure whether we should uh, postpone to the december of 2017 for one year you know like because we thought we thought we, we need to open when the ski seasons open and um yeah so that was the first hurdle and the other thing is you know like uh the culture culture is always different it depends on what country you go even if you go to a neighboring country you know it doesn't matter so that, that was also a surprise, you know, like to get used to how things work here. But eventually people came and uh, we established this place and had such, yeah, such a great time. And we touched a lot of people, I believe, you know, who, who said, you know, they, they really feel that uh, there was a change here. They, they went through a transformation here. Of course, of course. I mean, I'm, I'm a living proof of that. <laughs> yeah. So when you started in 2016, you were obviously the first co-working space in Bansko. And uh, um, because now, like, when you compare what is, like, how thriving the digital nomad community in Bansko is in comparison to 2016, um, how long did it take you, you know, to really get uh, going and to uh, so that other nomads, you know, notice that there is a, a town, there is a place for them, you know, to come and yeah. Also, I think that suits very well to the question. I see just this question popping up. Um, you know, in the beginning, nobody knew Bansko existed, or, or in many minds, you know, like I mean, maybe we all know the uh, the map and uh, of Europe or something like this, but eventually. Um, Matthias and I, we had to, you know, like announce that we are here, that something is happening and so on and so forth. And then, you know, people kept uh, knocking on our door. So we did everything on Facebook. We, we published every day and, you know, like how life is. And, you know, Matthias and I started to work from there and so on and so forth. And then slowly, slowly over time, you know, people took notice. But in the end, um, it was basically... I had a, 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 a big network, Matthias had a big network and together, you know, like people came, they visited us and, and they wanted to see what's going on. And over time, it was, I think, word of mouth, you know, within the uh, Nomad community, people um, are well connected and they look for great places. And um, I think we could deliver something that not many uh, can deliver in, in the world, worldwide. Um, which is this unique community feel. I think there is a couple of places you can probably count them on one hand or maybe two hand maximum that deliver really this community feel where people can, you know, um, during the day we are all working and busy, but in the evening we had programs because it is a small town. So we wanted to, you know, like work together, but also play together. And that was uh, very important. Uh, so we had the, a bigger range of uh, board games. We like board games, and, and um, also Bulgaria has so much to offer, like hot springs and outdoors and hiking and whatnot. And I think the people cherished that we are not in a big city, but we are in a, a, a location that is a little bit more remote. And I think this is what people, you know, like the air quality here is amazing. 
it's uh, it's very quiet. And um, if I open the window, you can hear the birds uh, tweeting. You know, like um, it's this place where you can really you know let go, breathe, and and, and um, enjoy this healthy environment. You know. Yes. I mean, definitely what you mentioned, the climate, the location, um, and you mentioned like to work and play, that's very important. And I think that's uh, many of us uh, miss. It's kind of like a lonely journey many times when you are, especially in a big city, you know, finding community and activities and just to hang out and network or just, you know, relax or uh, brainstorm. So Bansko for that. Um, is an extraordinary location. Um, actually, mine because you already responded to you know my next question, so which was about you know uh, creating a community. Like how how did you or why uh, there is such a strong digital nomad community in Bansko? Um, you already mentioned the climate, the thing. Would you say also the prices and maybe you know um, the fact that Bulgaria wasn't part of the Schengen zone had an important role in that? I think, you know, like there is uh, ultimately there are many factors, but I believe, you know, like in one way or another, um, we are like minded people. OK, most of us are entrepreneurs, freelancers, writers, whatever. And we like to connect with with, you know, with this kind of people, you know, like that are like minded, that, um, where we talk on, you know, like how can we better our business? How can we do this and how can we do that? But it's also people, you know, like with a certain, um, they, they prefer certain things, you know, like hanging out together, go for a walk, talk about business. These are all the things that bring people together. But then, you know, like we created really this close knit community where, you know, where we grew, grew friends, where we did, um, we did a lot of uh, jam sessions where we sang together and, and people wrote poetry and whatnot. So it's like really things, we did a lot of things that really brought us closer together, you know, ultimately. So what would you say makes Bansko? I'm mean, actually also, we have a question that is, um, was going to be kind of like my next question. Um, we have um, Giaco asking, um, do you think the detail that made the difference was the place or the people? So could, could Bansko would have been uh, in any other location, in any other town? I think, you know, like, um, I think it has to do with the local identity and uh, the environment where you're in. I think it, it plays a role. So for instance, you know, like uh, Bulgaria used to be a very affordable place, um, especially also in terms if you want to start a business or so, you know, like uh, for the business environment, it's really, really cool. It's an easy setup, especially for people within the EU. Um, but then the affordability and, you know, like this place, as I said, you know, like it's not in a city, but it's in a rural area where um, people who want to live a healthier or balanced lifestyle, so to say, I think this helped a lot. Uh, but ultimately, I think it doesn't matter. Um, it's easy to build a community. I mean, it's much easier to do this in, in Bansko, for instance. Uh, I offer Bitcoin walks now, so we meet every Saturday at 12 o'clock and uh, we go for a little hike and we are like a themed hiking group, if this makes sense, you know? And we, we, with ease, you know, in the second or third week, you know, like we have been 11 or 12 people or so uh, hiking through, um, through the forest here. And, and I think it's so easy, but it's also easy in any other place. You just have to constantly, you know, like offer your things and then people will come. Um, I think it's not necessarily that this could have only happened in Bansko. No, it could have happened also elsewhere if, if we would have put thought and, and energy into that. Okay, so basically, um, Bansko has offers like certain criteria and environment to boost, you know, creating a community, a thriving community for digital nomads, but it could have happened also in similar um, areas. Um, is there any other city or location, region that you would compare to Bansko worldwide? Well, I think, you know, like there is many, there are many places worldwide where, where uh, nomads or location independent people like to go. Masa, you, yourself, you're traveling. Um, I, I know uh, you have been in South America and Central America and Mexico. And I think, you know, like we can find these community places everywhere in the world now, you know, like amongst the common, of course, is um, maybe Thailand or um, also Philippines. 
Southeast Asia in general, Indonesia and so on and so forth. Um, I, I don't like to compare actually these different places with each other. I think they have all their own unique charm in one way or another. I think, you know, for me, what is important is actually the community. Um, we all grew sick and tired of answering the question, how do you earn money and where are you coming from? And, uh, you know, what do you do? How do you sustain your lifestyle? I think we all grew sick and tired of this question. So we seek for people who, who where we can um, talk about different things, just uh, the, the basic questions, I believe. Absolutely. Yeah. When are you going home? <laughs> yeah. How does that work? It's like... <laughs> yeah but this is one of the things i really love in this li lifestyle you know like nowadays i also build a business so i help people with residency service and company formation as you briefly managed uh, mentioned and i think you know like that our lifestyle we book a one-way ticket i think this is this is uh one of the great things you know like that you that you have the ability to slow travel you know you go somewhere you really check it out you look underneath the carpet and you see you know like whether this um, is an environment that you like you know and that supports you and i think this is very important you know like um not only for our businesses but also for our personal and mental health and, and growth potential that we have you know certainly and um, right now how many co-workings are operating in vansko and what's the population in vansko uh, that's a good question. So the population is, uh, depending whom you trust, something between 8,000 and 12,000 people. Um, and it's super lovely here. So this is one of the things I totally love. When you walk or, or drive through the town, you see like the elderly um, uh, population, you know, sitting outside of, on a bench, you know, on the, on the, in front of their houses, you know, and, and uh, taking in the sunshine, you know, like, and, and they sit there. And sometimes you see, you know, like the, the elderly women, you know, cooking lutenitsa on the streets. So they have fire and big pots, and, and this is something I'm. I'm uh, I think you know it's totally lovely. It's it's super cute, and also in town. So there are street dogs. We have um, like also projects who who look after street dogs and cats as well, and and, and so on. I, I think you know, like it's just a, a lovely place here to hang out. And right. Right now, there are, um, correct me if I'm mistaken, there are um, three different co-working companies. Ah, yeah, the question was the co-working space. Sorry, Medea. Um, yes, we have Altspace, um, we have Nestwork, and we have um, also a co-working Bansko. So also co-working Bansko, um, Matthias and I, we, we sold co-working Bansko. Is now Emil uh, has taken over since January, and he does a great job. He also built a co-living space, so we have... Um, Co-living Bansko now, also in terms of co-living, there's Avalon, uh, James, James does also a great job. And, and uh, But also there is, since this is a ski town, so there is uh, so many um, apartments and opportunities for accommodation that it's never, uh, we are never short of accommodation here. And especially the summer is is really uh, very affordable. It's, it's the most affordable season actually. Um, and I think it's the most loveliest time here as well. Everybody cherishes um, summer in Bansko. And if it's too warm in town, you have always the, uh, the opportunity to escape, you know, to higher altitudes where the temperatures are a bit lower and uh, you can go for hikes and so on. So, uh, but co-working spaces, we are three. Uh, I would say there's two uh, or three co-living spaces and they cater for different people and there's you know like additionally i mean i think it's not about the amount of, of co-working or co-living spaces it's more what is actually offered so like i offer the bitcoin walk other people offer um like other opportunities to join like whether it's a uh, marketing sessions whether it's um uh, financial, whether it's business, whether it's personal growth, whether it's yoga, whether it's this or that. So, like, I have seen now um, communities popping up on WhatsApp now, on WhatsApp groups. So we have WhatsApp groups with 300 members and whatnot, where people offer so many things. And I think this is really the quality that you can dive into any of the topics that you're interested in, photo walks and um, uh, vegan lifestyle and I don't, I don't know we have like now so many things coming up and especially in the summer 
when people know or when the nomad fest is happening you know when when there are so many people in town you know like it's really bustling and there is a, a very cool atmosphere as you know yourself um <laughs> where so many things happen and you know like on the in the Bansko nomad fest you know like like last year i heard so many stories where people met like philip and virginia for instance they met for a morning coffee and in the evening, they were a team of seven people. They had a website online. They sold tickets. They had a company form, formed already. And, and, you know, like for the idea they developed in the morning, in the evening, they had already the things, you know, like lined up, you know, which, and these are, this is the atmosphere that I think is so bustling, you know, like where things happening, you meet people, you know, in a serendipitous uh, moment or environment where you never know, you know, like maybe you end up with a new venture. I, I know that people met at Nomad Fest. Uh, I think it was a group of nine people or so in the beginning. And then they started traveling together. And a year later, after a year of traveling with the group, they met again at the Nomad Fest. And then the group grew, you know, like they are like, I don't know, 15 people now traveling together always worldwide. And then they meet again at the Nomad Fest. And these are how the groups and, and um, new ventures are forming. It's something that is really mind boggling. I, 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 you know, like if you tell me, I don't know whether this is, you can believe this, but when you see it with your own eyes, you know, like this is happening, you know, constantly, it's really amazing, you know. Yes, um, that's certainly like a bubbling pot, you know, there is always something coming to the surface and, you know, um, like dreams, you know, just popping up and becoming realities actually. And that actually takes me, next question, which is about uh, Bansko Nomad Fest. So you were already, you know, you brought, you created the infrastructure, you put Bansko on the, you know, world map of digital nomadism. Uh, we can call it, I, I personally love the term uh, nomad town, and I consider Bansko to be like one of the most amazing nomad towns, you know. I also a lot in Chiang Mai, I've been to Medellin, you know, all the like Mexican uh, places, the um, mountains where I'm right now, uh, many different places. But for me, Bansko is like the ideal, the perfect uh, uh, representative of what we can call a nomad town. So after you creating and, you know, um, that magnet, bringing all the nomads there and creating that infrastructures and obviously fostering, you know, all the local businesses and having a, an impact on the local ecosystem, your first, your second move was the Bansko Nomad Fest, right? Because and I think it happened actually exactly this way you were describing it before, that people just gathered together. It was something very organic. Uh, a very relaxed chat and it was like okay let's do more you know uh, let's take over so what is the story of Bansko Nomad Fest if you you know if you were a storyteller and would just share, tell us a short story yeah so I think you know like what one of our unique things what we always did uh, within co-working Bansko is we always had events we always had events happening and we always um, you know, brought people together that are you know interested in one topic uh, whether it's influencers whether it's uh, women in business whether it's um, whether it's a bitcoin event whether it's um, uh, we did also dating events uh, in cooperation in collaboration uh, uh, with um, nomad soulmates and and so on and so forth so it was always events we at co-working bands go always focused on events to really you know of course we wanted to promote also the town itself because first of all we are living here and we love it here and and we wanted to share with other people to take part into this and also we wanted to be amongst people you know like um, it's great if there is a fluctuation, if new people are coming in and, you know, like so many people have actually settled because the prices here, um, although it went up a little, are still relatively affordable compared to Austria, Switzerland, Germany and so on and so forth. And I think, you know, like, um, yeah, that really uh, helped to, to establish, you know, a, a, a community that A, lives here and then also plus we have this fluctuation. And I think this was really, um, yeah, our goal. And I think the logical extension was just to make this bigger, to invite more people, to get more people in. 
and to create like a special event for for a certain period of time so for us for instance you know like um you know a couple of days is never enough so having a, a a normal format of a normal conference, I think, um, would not work for Bansko. I think, you know, the week long event is just a thing where so many things can happen. You get to know the people, you get to, um, to know them better, to connect better on, on a deeper level. I think this is, um, you know, one of the things that Bansko Nomadfest can do very well. And but it's not only that, because also I feel that I have a responsibility, you know, like to to educate the people, especially, you know, like I think what we want to do is to deliver as much value as possible for the attendees. So when you come, you have the opportunity to learn more about business, to better your business, to start your business. Uh, to start also your um, this lifestyle if you're new to this lifestyle to start this lifestyle in a let's say safe way so that you can um, talk to other people you can learn from other people and, and so on and so forth but you know like much more than that it's also about personal growth it's also about you know how can you be the best version of yourself and um, I would call it um, actually the playground for entrepreneurs, the playground for business people, which I think you know describes it best for me. So we hang out, we have the option to uh, visit and to listen to these great speakers that we have. We have a speaker lineup that is really, really cool. We talk about investments, how can you generate wealth, how can you protect your wealth, and, and so on and so forth. And I think these are very important questions and um, topics because so many people uh, I see traveling, you know, like, uh, and if I ask a few questions, um, many of the people have not really thought that through, you know, like they live in the moment and they tell me, oh, I don't know what I do next week. How can you um, expect me to know what's happening in a year or two? But I think, you know, like, um, it's very important that your setup is solid so that you don't have any problems in the future. So especially legally, whether it's healthcare, whether it's this and that, I think there is a couple of things you have to, um, you have to do right in the beginning and then it gives you uh, more free space and actually more freedom, I believe, you know. Definitely. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you have a talk about this topic, right? Yes. So it's not really you know, how to become a digital nomad and where to go next and how to have fun, but also how to maintain this on a sustainable and a safe way that can, you know, that can be kind of like an act as a social security that we might not have. Um, so is that a talk or is it a panel that you are going to um, discuss this topic? So very good question. Thank you, uh, Masa. So yes, I have a talk and I talk about the legal or the legality, um, the basically the foundation what you should establish so that you can really uh, focus on other things the things you love but i think you know like you need to wrap your head around it once at least to understand you know like what can be the legal uh, implications in the long term so i have a talk for that and also there will be a panel with uh, joachim um, where we talk about uh, wealth generation how you can for instance invest in real estate how you can invest in bitcoin and and so on and so forth so to help you you know like uh with ideas for financial planning for financial future planning where you can learn you know from people like joachim for instance how to do this safely and so on and so forth um we really want to that's really something i would like to do to educate the people to learn so that they can have the tools and the tool set where they can learn, you know, how to apply this to their life, you know. That's an amazing uh, point, you know, because obviously, you know, you started, you were a pioneer, so, you know, it's not that you are just fresh from the college and trying to define yourself and define your journey as a digital nomad. So you have an insight and now you are, you know, you are like in the middle of this journey and you know how important it is to have it sustainable and long term. So would you, would you think that, is there anything such as Nomad Academy you know, when you were mentioning that, like <laughs> that's a great idea, Masa. I think this is a great idea, and I think also this is one of 
this is one of the reasons why I love this community so much. It's it's about sharing. You know, like Rosie, for instance, um, she, she is a digital nomad. Uh, I, I don't know whether she calls herself a digital nomad. She was traveling a lot. She was living abroad and, and she did all these things. She is Bulgarian and she came back and she's now so happy that... Uh, we have this community in Bansko and she is offering like a marketing event. I think it's every Tuesday or so, but um, never mind, you know, like um, we established also the Telegram group for uh, for Bansko. So everyone can hop on to this Telegram group and you can inform yourself. Also, there are lots of WhatsApp group. If you don't have the contacts yet, uh, we can definitely get you into there where you learn what is actually happening here, uh, what are the offers. I, I know there is also uh, improv. Uh, there's an improv group. So we, we have uh, all sorts of topics where you can learn, grow, exchange. And this is, the, this is one of the things I'm so happy within this community, that people are willing to share, share their experience, and where other people can learn so easily. You know, like, um, I remember when I was managing the uh, co-working space, you know, like we were maybe eight people sitting next to each other, working away and so on and so forth. And then suddenly somebody came in and started to talk about his business and how he did this and how he did that. And then I could witness, you know, like three other people had, had this, you know, like they, they listened up and they're like, Oh, wow, you just solved my business problem, you know? Um, and it's, it's just this um, serendipitous moment where people um, yeah, have these insights, you know, so to say. And, and this is what I really absolutely cherish in this community. And what, what do you think that Bansko makes Bansko Nomad Fest different from other, um, you know, nomad uh, conferences, um, gatherings? What, what make it so special? So, I mean, to me, it's very close to my heart, as you mentioned, you know, I'm traveling all year round. I'm always in remote places, but this is the one appointment I have per year that I haven't been missing out in the last three years. So no matter where I am, I would make sure I'm in Bansko, 23rd of June till the 30s. And I really try to take in as much as possible. I have my own, you know, personal and private reasons that I think are kind of like widely shared. But what, how would you um, describe that? What really makes Bansko Nomad Fest different than any other fest? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, you know, like it's the, it's a small town. Bansko is a small town. It's not big. And I think this adds tremendously to the experience. So people are close knit, you know, like um, you walk down the Pirin Street and you meet all your friends, you know, like or not all of them, but you know, like many of them. And, and, or maybe you sit down for a coffee and then, you know, like just a few friends pass and, and you sit down, you have a chat and you have this, um, yeah, I think this is the speciality that uh, we are really close together and we are close knit. I, I, it's hard to explain. It's something, you know, like it's like explaining somebody what is co-working. You have to go through the experience in order to understand it really. And I think um, it's the atmosphere here, which is something I haven't seen this atmosphere in many other places, I must admit. And I, I don't exactly know why, but it's just here. It seems unique. Yeah, it's just like this, um, as somebody mentioned before, it, like the it has a it's a small mountain town, but it has the the big city vibes. I mean, it has a lot to offer, um, it, especially professional personal growth. And as you mentioned, you can just walk on the street, and the ideas or opportunities can come, like you know, pop into you. So that makes it very um, unique, and that's something that uh, for me, I would call it magical. For me, Bansko is just pure magic. Um, and having said that, I've been like finding myself for uh, 11 years and um, been to many places, but Bansko is the one place I cannot get it off my mind. Um, and also, I think the number of nomads that really moved there and, uh, you know, um, start, instead of being nomads, they kind of like became uh, normal, uh, uh, normal inhabitants of the place. So that would also make the difference. Because we have again this nomad town, this phenomena that many nomads, nomad families are living there. Um, apart from the people that you know come and go, um, and we have people like myself that you know keep on coming, so that keeps like a um, 
kind of like a flow, a stable flow, and you 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 know that you're going to be there and you're going to catch up with everybody. Um, and a lot of amazing things can happen, whether it can be something uh, related to pleasure or you know to your professional um, trajectory. Um, what would you consider? You know, what's going to be the future on Nomad Face Pansco? Because this is the fourth year. This is the fourth edition, right? So yes. Yes, that's right. Um, it's a great question, you know, like, and um, the owner group, uh, you're amongst the owner group. Uh, so the owner group grew a lot. Uh, we are eight people. And uh, I think, you know, like, we have so many ideas what Bansko Nomadfest could be and how it could develop. And we have, you know, so many ideas how to, you know, make it better, how to pull more in. And I think, you know, like, some parts you will be able to see um, end of next month, end of June, where we have also a shark tank. So we want to help people who start out new. And mm -hmm. I, um, I cannot say too much. Uh, Philip is working on it. So I don't know exactly how far they are and, and what is exactly happening, how the program looks exactly. But this is one of the things. So we want definitely also cater for more, you know, like in the professional realm. Um, also where we can collaborate with, um, you know, venture funds and so on and so forth. I just recently made a new connection with Sofia, where we have people uh, from Sofia uh, who have actually contacts to venture funds and who are interested into building unicorns. And I think, you know, like, this is one of the things here also, you know, you talk to somebody and you say, you know, like, oh, I, I have this idea or I want to do this. And someone of, of the people you're talking to has the right connection. And, and this is something that, that is also, you know, like unique and, and really cool. It's exactly as you mentioned, it's the power of connection, right? That in Bansko, it happens very easily. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you don't even have, you know, to go and do extensive research on the internet to look for contacts or, you know, just like come your LinkedIn contacts. In Bansko, it just happens uh, in a very relaxed and fun way. Um, so it's amazing that you are mentioning that because, you know, um, some festivals I've been attending, um, they all have been very interesting, uh, very empowering in a way, but some were shorter. So, you know, I had the feeling that, oh, two days, three days is not enough. So in that sense, I'm really glad that Bansko Nomad Fest is seven. I wish it was two weeks <laughs> because it is kind of like a FOMO. You are, you're running a lot and there are so many things that interest you and, you know, so many different ideas coming from right and left that you don't know where to focus on. So but I'm, um, for me personally, like the duration is amazing. The place is, uh, the location is right. Um, and um, what you mentioned that, you know, you like, it's going towards like a more professional and, you know, helping people with the startups with ideas, the uh, Shark Tank. I think this is uh, something new and important that has to happen because it's not about like how to become a digital nomad or how to travel and stay healthy. It's more than that. It's also how to thrive professionally. So I'm uh, glad that it is like a new add on to the program of this year. Right. Absolutely. And I think, you know, like um, besides that, we really want to deliver value so that the people, you know, like party is great and we love party and we want to party and there will be also some extensions this year um uh, we are not quite pronouncing this out loud yet but um you know it's there is more than only party there's more than only hanging out there is also the things that happen between the lines and i think that's very important uh, to understand you know like um it's a great place where you can have parties where you can hang out and where you can meet people but also you know like um where there is a professional part with different tracks where you can learn about different things where you can connect with experts from from this area where you have the chance you know like people are around here and they are around for a week and it's very easy you know like to to grab someone to um to meet them to hang out for breakfast or dinner together we have also uh, themed dinners this year so this also helps you know like to to get the ball rolling and to have the people really um it's not somebody who 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 throws a speech and then he's off but usually the people stick around and i think this is the good thing so you have the opportunity to really talk to the people get to know them and so on and so forth and i think um that's invaluable yeah 
What is what is like personally? What is uh, what is one of your main favorite parts of the? I mean, I know there are so many things. It's hard really to point out one single thing, but if you had, you know, um, to point out like a few things that you personally love about Pansko Nomad Fest, what would that be for you? I I th think I mentioned it already with the story from Philip and Virginia and how quickly they formed a, a, a company and and how they started. It's for me. It's this serendipity. It's for me. It's like, um, yeah. First of all, it's the vibe is absolutely amazing. I just love it. You're around here. You hang out, and you talk about your favorite topics, and you talk about topics. So, you know, I have many topics like personal growth. I'm also um, a local host for Mind Valley in Bulgaria. So there is a lot of people from Mind Valley. I mean, a lot, but there are a few people from Mind Valley also joining us. And, you know, having the ability to create these groups in, within, you know, like the smaller groups where you have these breakout options, you know, like where you meet with with, with other closer different communities, you know, like so to say within, um, which is really amazing. And this this is something I totally enjoy. You know, the serendipity. You never know with what you end up in in the end, and this is the cool thing about it, you know. But it is within this bustling atmosphere that that's for me that that's nomad fest. Yeah. yeah, I can already see, you know, the energy that you receive from, uh, um, you know, from the entire happening and from the location. Just just you know, <laughs> through looking at you, I can it just comes and it's contagious. Um, we are, you know, we are almost finishing we have like a couple of more minutes um what would you you know if you were going to invite um, people to come to Bansko Nomad Fest um how would you phrase that how would well, you that's a good question I'm not very good with marketing <laughs> but I think you know like um don't miss out I think it's an opportunity and as you know like I believe I've been to many conferences as a speaker, as a participant, and so on and so forth. And a conference or a meetup from this scale, you know, like um, Pansko Nomad Fest, I think is the biggest uh, nomad festival in the world, um, has really a potential where you can really learn a lot. And I think even if you're not a nomad, even if you are uh, somebody who doesn't know much about this lifestyle. Here you have the chance to talk to people directly who live this, who who are in this lifestyle since a long time. And and I think, you know, like the ideas I took away and what for me, when I met nomads the first time in my life, I I understood they do something different. And, and I understood that for them, the focus is the lifestyle, you know, like, and then they find ways or businesses how they can support this lifestyle. Rather as I had this other focus, you know, like a, a job centric focus, you know, like how I grew up and I, I worked for businesses most of the time in my life until I asked myself, you know, for whom do I do this? And then I, I had many other questions <laughs> and, and then I started out on my own. And I think, you know, like, um, when you visit this place, you know, you can read so many things online and you can watch YouTube videos, but you know, like when you meet these people and when you're part of this, this is a very, very different experience. And I think it's about this experience. So if you, if you're on the fence, whether to come or not, I think it's worthwhile a thousand times because, um, you will learn and gain you, you will have a great time to hang out with, with people who who are really awesome we have so many awesome people i i cannot tell you know like you bump into someone and you talk hey what, what is your story and then you learn you know like uh, uh, you know i personally i'm a sailor i'm a skipper so i have also uh, sailing stories to tell you know like so and, and you meet these people and, and they come with a story you're like it's mind-boggling and, and this is the cool thing about Bansko, about the Hello. What is like a most interesting or, you know, um, however, you know, whatever adjective you want to use, but something like most um, encounter experience or person that you met there? Like, uh, what would you consider like something very special and uh, maybe transformative in a way? Yeah, it's a good question. I think, you know, like, um, 
the question i think it depends on 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 the personality on the person him or herself you know how open are you for things to happen in your life and i think if you're open you know anything is possible at every uh, at every given moment but i think you know like if you have the chance to be a, around people you know like uh, um, I'm not sure who came up with this phrase. I think it was Tim Ferriss. You're the uh, result of the five closest people you surround yourself with. And I think this is totally true. The closer people to you, um, you know, are a mirror to you or you are a mirror to them. And, and I think um, if you have the chance, you know, to hang out with these amazing people, it's definitely uplifting all the time, you know. Okay, yeah, amazing. Um, so it's not only one story, it's just like the entire vibe and the entire community there. I do have a tip for actually for people that are coming to Bansko, whether or not they've been there before, or if they were first time, is give it some time. Because I see many times, you know, we, we, we try, you know, to check uh, boxes and it's like, okay, I have one week here and then I'm running there and then I have one week in, you know, co-living Antalya in Turkey and then, you know, I go here and there. But um, I think Bansko really reveals itself when you stay there for a longer time. And then little by little, you have like these little drops of happiness and growth and just being becoming calm and, you know, um, maybe even like um, creating some roots, creating a community. And Bansko has that possibility. So um, from my point of view, anybody coming to Bansko, Bansko Nomad says, Give it some time. Just don't book your flight, you know, for a week and then run away. Try to stay there. A lot of things happen afterwards, right? Through the unconferences that Absolutely. are taking place, a lot of connections are being made. And uh, um, this is quite powerful if you give it the time that it really needs. I don't know if you agree with that. Absolutely. I mean, you do. <laughs> and I think, you know, like, I think this is one of the benefits of this lifestyle. I mean, if you cannot afford more than a week, well, what can you do? But if, uh, I mean, you know, time-wise, um, uh, in terms of affordability, I think it's really affordable here compared to many other places like Lisbon or, or else. Um, but people used to stay for a month or three months even, you know, like for, um, for a good period in the summertime. Because, um, yeah, as I said, you know, like there are people here, the community is here during the entire year and having the chance to, but I think it's in general, having the possibility of slow traveling, you know, like staying uh, in one place, you know, for two months, I, I really cherish that. Personally, I, I loved it because I can dig in deeper, I can understand more, I can make deeper connections. I, I appreciate that a lot, to be honest, in, in general. But uh, if you're here, you know, stay longer. Definitely, there is many things happening afterwards, and uh, many people do stay longer, so you you can it's, form deeper connections. It really doesn't hurt. I think probably it's one of the most affordable, still one of the most uh, affordable um, digital nomad spots or towns in uh, Europe. I would say, right? Still, um, amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Uwe, for you know for taking the time. I know you are very busy. <laughs> uh you are doing a hundred thousand things because we have uh, um three weeks uh, till Bansko Nomad Fest um, starting in 23rd uh, many people also go there beforehand I think you're already in Bansko right yes yeah, yeah. Uh, and for anybody um, you know deciding to go there it's um don't you don't have to come exactly at the same uh, start time you can just feel free to come before or even if you can't make it at the, to the bands gonna just come afterwards and connect with people um well thank you everybody for tuning in for joining us and a special thanks to uve because you've been so busy and you made this time and you know for sharing this inside uh, um, personally, I'm really thankful to you. You know what you what you have created, the opportunity you gave to many people. Don't laugh; it's honest. Like you really inspired, you really inspired, and you uh, you created an ecosystem. You, Mati, you have many other people that are involved in that, and um, that has to be honored. So maybe one day we will see your statue. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Thank you very much, Masa. Um, if people want to do so, if they want to get in touch with me. Uh, you can reach me at uh, mystartbulgaria.com, mystartbulgaria.com. Um, there is a form, you can fill a form, get in touch with me. Otherwise, make sure, um, I don't know, Masha, whether we, we can share also the Telegram group so that the people can join. 
um that's probably also something um yeah and i'm looking forward to thank you so much Marcy. Thank, thank you too yeah and thank you everybody i hope this conversation inspired you um to come to bansko nomad fest or to come to bansko um get in touch with us you're on social media linkedin instagram as you joined us today and as um, uwe mentioned we also have a, tele a telegram um group so i would love to see everybody there and uh, look forward to uh, more more projects and the nomad academy maybe <laughs> in the nomad town of thank you very much Masa. bye bye, bye. bye.